Darwin taught us many things about evolution, but there is one tree that he did not climb. With this series, we seek to answer these questions and unravel the mysteries of... Hello and welcome to another episode of Evolution of a Noob on World of Tanks with your host, Zar Peppers. Today... Well, this is what I want to go all over today. Maps. Or, not maps, not plural maps, but the map in the corner there. As was pointed out to me by this guy. I should probably look at my maps more, and this match is the reason why you should look at your maps more. And I am at fault here as much as everybody, anybody else unfortunately. Uh, we are in the French um, AMX thing. I don't really know. That's not important. That's not important. What's important is you see on the right of the map, I've made the map bigger, is we have two guys in light tanks streaming down our right flank and it's pretty much taken out everybody on the right side of the map. And we are sitting here. Somebody's the artillery, I assume, is desperately calling for help, and his desperate calls for help go ignored. Now, to be honest, I may have noticed what was happening, but in this thing I just figured that I was so slow that by the time I got there it wouldn't make any difference in the world. But that's no excuse, I still should have gone. Because we may have had a chance, I may have gotten lucky somehow and taken out everybody there, but that was a missed opportunity. Now I managed to get this guy and at this point I'm finally thinking okay maybe we should uh, maybe I should probably do something about that. Try and take aim at this Russian tank. I actually had no clue what tank that was. It's sort of as a War Thunder player I'm used to playing with you know, American, Soviet, and German tanks. So it's sort of when I start seeing tanks that I haven't seen in War Thunder, I'm still learning in that regard. Like that thing, I've got no clue what that is. It's American. And it's hopefully about to die. Yes. Now, as you can see, this actually hasn't been too bad a match for me, but. It doesn't matter if it's been a good match for me if we lose in the end. Which is why you should always look at your map. Situ situational awareness. I find in all of these games, World of Tanks, Warships, War Thunder, all those games, the one thing that gets most people killed is failures in situational awareness. Either somebody comes up behind you or you get flanked when you could have seen it coming if you had just been looking around. And a lot of that's understandable when there's a lot going on. Sometimes you just can't keep up with everything, but... Okay, now, the second match, we're in the Stuart M2. We're still on the British line. Bit of a, a an import, or an export, depending on where you live. It was a light tank that was built for the U.S. military that served between 1935 and 1942. And it's quite a fun little tank. I thought I would go with a light tank, working on my teamwork and my sort of going where I needed. Uh, so I went with a light tank so I could be maneuverable and so I really needed the support of my team to succeed. So I had to keep an eye on with who was with me on who was with me, what was going on. Now we start out with a few guys in the center. Our team is all going for center, so I decide, since nobody's going up the left flank, I'll go check that out to see if anybody's coming down. I'm not going to go do some, you know, crazy flank maneuver where I try and speed around. I just want to mainly observe, find some bushes and see if there is cause for concern. Now this thing has a pretty substantial gun. It's equipped with the 37mm 
M5 gun, which rather interestingly was the first dedicated anti-tank gun in the US military. Uh, kind of surprising being just a 37mm, but I suppose that versus the tanks at its time it would have been pretty effective. Okay, we've run into three guys. One of them is a Panzer II. Now I know that there are three guys looking at that position, so I decided to go around and take a few shots from this position. We also have another, I believe it's a Panzer II, who's gone around to that further rock. So I'm going to try and get in here and support him. I have pinged this area on the map, I believe, at this point. We get in a few shots on their side, because they're not really paying attention to me at the moment. He's under cover, he's moving around. Go for a shot, no. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five, six guys coming up the left flank right now. To their credit, we do have a few people just to the north east of B sniping them. So credit where credit's due, uh, but I'm not sure what the... I guess we've got it covered here. Now that Panzer II is about to die. I decide to move back to the other position because I had been firing from that one for a while. want to change it up. Another ping on the map. Another guy calling for help. But no one coming. Getting a few more shots hit on the medium. Now originally this thing started out life as the, the combat car, but which was mounted with had those 30 and 50 caliber guns on it. There goes the pa Panzer II. Now I know that these guys might be coming around that rock now, so I want to stay in this position. But yeah, this thing was actually originally the the combat car, but during the Spanish Civil War, they, the US military observed that tanks mounted with only machine gun caliber weapons were completely ineffectual in combat. So they added some more armor and the 37 millimeter gun, and it eventually became the M2. Now, I'm being wary because I'm worried that somebody's going to come speeding up on my left side. But I think I got the only person who was that far into our area. We got two left, a medium two, and I believe that was a cruiser. Once again, I'm going to switch positions. I'm on pretty low health. I've been brawling it out here for quite a while, and I've got no one else with me at the moment. There's, I believe, two left. This cruiser. There. One left. Let's see if we can... Ouch. Driver gone. And... Yeah, we're done. We just didn't get the... There's only so much one person can do. But... Me and those other teammates who were around there did manage to thin them out substantially. So now our team has a pretty good chance. We do have somebody going for the cap, the enemy cap right now, so he will be on that soon. There we go. This guy is, I mean, I'm not really sure what he was thinking, just going in there and then he decides to, oh no, let's just stop. We'll just stop here. Boom. Yeah. I mean... Credit for him for just going in there, guns blazing, but... You know. But, as you see, we've... Said we've managed to take this one. Uh, the few people who we did have at that area of engagement thinned out the herd enough that the people who are still at the cap has a chance of dealing with them. And then this guy can just focus on capping the enemy base and winning the game.
So we did win this one. Now to just illustrate the point a bit further, we're going to have another quick match in the M2. I'm looking at the map, I don't see many people going to the this side, so I head down here. Immediately run into contacts, one hit. I've got one other guy with me. I picked the map. Although it's not looking too bad around here at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, I'm the only the two people here and three people on their side. It could go bad pretty quick. Now he's going up to a further position to try and hit them. So I decide to head up a bit further to try and hit them from the other side because they're all looking for me at where I was before. Find this Panzer II sitting behind some rubble. Try and put some fire into him, but he's pretty well covered. It's not the most accurate gun, and this turret's the only thing showing. But he's not really doing any damage anyways. However, the guy behind me dies. I notice that pretty quick. And before I get flaked on my left, I decide to get out of there. One little Stuart run. This guy will probably take a shot at me. So everybody has gone off to the other side of the map and we have quite a few guys still left to deal with on this side. Now I'm having to deal with the people directly in front of me, the people slightly to my 10 o'clock and I've also got enemies who are going to be firing at me for my 3 o'clock. However, I know I just have to focus with these people on my 12 o'clock first because there's two of them and well, they're there, but I'm still getting hit on this side and by the time I switch the firing to him, it's too late. But I do manage to take him out right before I exploded in a blaze of glory. Now what's the rest of the team going to do? Well, I guess it is time for a day at the beach because they're heading to the water. The enemy is basically in control of our cap now. They're sitting there. Not entirely sure what, I mean... I would think it would make sense to push up, at least try and push up on the right, going right towards the cap, but they just keep falling further and further back. And I, I, I'm hardly someone to lay criticism like this because there's some games that I just I'm not thinking and I do something dumb like this. But then we have this RT who decides I've had enough of this. Let's just go for a nice little drive along the beach. Put 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 put. Wee wee, let's go to the beach. La beach is nice. Noise. There's the cabin already for relaxing gin and tonic or wine or something. Meanwhile, the artillery is fighting for its life. And it's a nice, it's a nice walk on the beach. Bit of a suicidal walk on the beach. This guy obviously needs some. Oh no. No, he changed his mind. He thought... Oh, now it's time for a picnic, I guess. Oh, look at all these guys. They wanna... They wanna join me. I've got extra sandwiches for everybody. Come on, I have extra sandwiches. 